Hi everyone, welcome back to Talent Order's Breakfast Briefing. This week I'm joined by Mark Brown, who is the Global Managing Director for Cybersecurity and Information Resilience at BSI. And we're going to be discussing the impact COVID-19 is having on the cybersecurity market. Mark, thank you so much for joining me this week. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to give your insights on this subject. Um, before we go to any questions, can you give the audience a little bit of background on your career history? Yes, thanks to you, Amy, and thanks to everyone for listening in. Um, I've been in cybersecurity for coming up for 28 years now, uh, in a guise of various different roles. I spent about you know, the first 10 to 12 years in public sector, and since 2005 have been a, a, you know, in a number of roles across various sectors, uh, including uh, 10 years as the global CIO, uh, for Fortune 500 industrial engineering business uh, and global CISO for Fortune 10 global consumer products company. In between those times, I've spent uh, you know, a couple of tours in professional services. So I was previously a partner at EY leading their UK and Ireland cybersecurity data privacy and business resilience practice. And most latterly, before joining BSI, I was the senior partner and global practice head at Wipro. Uh, the Indian outsourcing company, where I built uh, and then ran their Industry 4.0 OT and IoT security practice. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, and my first question really then is, how has COVID impacted your employment? Well, the biggest change is that you know, there has been no change in, in many respects, uh, apart from the ways of working. Mm -hmm. uh, Cyber security has become ever increasingly important for businesses as businesses look to navigate the pandemic situation and say, how do we continue to keep operating? And because there has been a massive shift towards cloud adoption, where previously there may have been you know, aversion to cloud operating systems, and businesses are looking to ensure the resilience of their business operations through technology, the role of the cybersecurity professional has become even more important. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, you know, for myself, it, it's actually been a busier time during COVID than it was beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen um, a lot of the sectors that I'm recruiting have been really busy because the working from home comes from so many risks. I mean, so many risks come from that, you know. Um, so, yeah, lots, lots of work for professionals such as yourself. Yeah. Um, so that kind of brings on to how do you believe the cybersecurity market has been impacted? Obviously, a lot more work. Um, any other any other ways? Yeah, the main way I, I see the cybersecurity market has been impacted is the, the manner in which the community of cybersecurity professionals is having to reskill. Mm -hmm. For for many years, people have talked about a cyber skills shortage in totality across the cybersecurity market. But where I think it's really starting to become evident is in the, the more modern business facing cybersecurity skills, digital transformation in cloud, in industry 4.0, in OT and IoT, areas which weren't the previous remit of a traditional CISO or the, mm -hmm. you know, the cybersecurity professional, but areas where they have to move, they have to learn those new skills to maintain relevance. So the key dilemma for, for the vast majority of the cybersecurity market is that COVID and the impacts on the cybersecurity market has accelerated the need to reskill, to retrain, mm -hmm. and to keep people's skill sets relevant as businesses rapidly transform their technological environments. Yeah, okay. Fine. And how do you think the cybersecurity market will adapt to that? Well, the, the, there are issues around geosocial culture issues that, that we're really starting to see. Um, I, and this coincides not just with COVID, but with Brexit mm -hmm. and you know the, the US elections. And, and let me briefly explain why these all sort of run in hand. The pandemics have caused a global shift in technology matters. Brexit has caused legal and compliance shifts between mm -hmm. what's able to be happening within Europe and the need for different, slightly different approaches and compliance burdens within the UK from the European neighbours. 
But probably the most dynamic shift we're seeing that, that times you know, and coincides with, with the pandemic is in the US. And it may have missed a lot of people, uh, but really represents significant opportunity for cybersecurity professionals dealing with North America. Mm. Trumpism created a perspective of renationalization. And for maybe the last two and a half to three decades, what we've seen in North America is the vast majority of organizations have sought for economic benefits to outsource a lot of their cybersecurity and IT operations to mm. lower cost, cost arbit labor arbitrage centers, such as India, such as Southeast Asia. But what we saw with Trump politics was the cancellation of the HB1 visa scheme, which stopped a lot mm. of those nationals traveling to in from uh, you know, elsewhere to America to get jobs and reshoring initiatives. But what it didn't account for was the fact that the past two and a half to three decades has seen a rapid decline in the number of cybersecurity professionals in North America. Mm. What that then results in is a classic supply and demand situation. There's, there is significant mm. demand because all, mo a lot of North American companies now looking for cybersecurity professionals, mm. which simply don't exist in the volumes required. Mm. And that's doing two things. It's creating market opportunity for the service professionals, and it's creating an, a, ra a rapid increase in the pay opportunities and the remuneration opportunities for mm. cybersecurity professionals in the US. So the whole cybersecurity market is having to evolve and to adapt. But then we bring it back to the pandemic. And previously, you that those sort of scenarios might have seen a number of people decide, well, I'm going to go to the US because it's going to be economically beneficial for me to do so. Mm. But with modern day ways of working, with remote working now being a new normal, we then see the viability of actually saying, you can actually fulfill global requirements around security from anywhere in the world. So the whole cybersecurity market has to evolve. It has to recognize these geocultural new norms and adapt their ways of working to be more societally agile, but mm -hmm. more societally aware of the, the environments they're operating with and the, the clients they're going to be working with as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, a lot of that correlates with a lot of sectors. You know, there is a lot more flexibility as to how you can work and people are going to be demanding that I think um, as we come out of lockdown especially as well you know we've we've shown that we communicate like this with our clients it's not my favorite way I've got to be honest I would still prefer in person um, but yeah there's there's lots of ways that various markets are adapting and it's really really interesting to hear your insights especially um in america as well um what advice do you offer anyone looking for new employment opportunities within cyber well the key for me is to, to keep yourself open to new ideas don't be myopic to previous ways of working if all you've ever done is worked in the financial services sector yes that can be financially rewarding but does it challenge you? Mm -hmm. I, and you know, many people I know have actually recognized the benefit of challenging themselves by moving out of a safe haven, moving maybe from you know, financial services into energy, into oil and gas. If you're in the industrial sectors, looking mm -hmm. at you know, maybe moving into the consumer goods. If you're in consumer goods, maybe moving into financial services. So. For me, the key is keep your mind open to new opportunities. Mm -hmm. Don't be myopic on previous ways of working. And going back to you know, one of the earlier questions around how the cybersecurity market is evolving, is that retraining, that reskilling agenda. Mm -hmm. Many of the very legacy roles that used to exist probably won't exist mm -hmm. going forward. So if you don't remain open to new opportunities, if you don't look at moving through different sectors and geographies, are you going to be relevant to mm -hmm. employers going forward? 
So bringing all that together, maintaining relevance and re keeping yourself open to new ideas and new challenges would be my key recommendations. Absolutely. I 100% agree. You can't, you can't um, pigeonhole yourself as well. And it, we're all changing um, or having to change a lot. And I think you've got, you've got to go with it. Um, stay relevant. Keep retraining. There's a lot of change in the world. Um, and sometimes you need to change with it. Um, brilliant. Well, they are all of my questions for today, Mark. Thank you so much for taking part. I really do appreciate it. Um, if anyone wants the opportunity to be a guest on The Breakfast Briefing or has any more questions for Mark, please email me on amy.morris at talentorder.com or message me via LinkedIn. I hope you're all staying safe and well. I'll see you next time. Bye.